I wouldn't. I, I would recommend uh, all uh, CPA candidates to take it as early as possible before work picks up. But uh, if for whatever reason you're unable to, it is possible to pass while working full time. You just have to be dedicated. Let's welcome our next guest who just recently passed the CPA exam. Uh, hello, my name is Joshua Harris. I am currently a auditor at a public accounting firm uh, in Los Angeles, California. I am originally from Massachusetts and went to school in Massachusetts as well at Northeastern University. How did you study for the CPA exam in general? Uh, the way I studied for the CPA exam is I took a very analytical approach to it. I had the goal of trying to squeeze in two chapters uh, a week. So two chapters in seven days, which is about uh, what uh, 2.5 or about three, like three days, one chapter, four days, another one, or three days, one chapter, three days, the second chapter, maybe one day doing a comprehensive review. So um, depending on the exam, it has different amounts of chapters. So as long as I can get two done in a week, and uh, I'll do that continuously up until I get about two weeks out from my exam. So at that point, I would have studied all of the information within the chapter in that two week period is kind of where I cram all of it together and review everything that I've been studying the past couple of months. So I, I leveraged the multiple choice questions. Uh, I looked at all the lectures. I took notes. I uh, rewrote my notes. I did simulations. But when it came down to the mock exams itself, I chose to skip them, actually. And so, <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. So my, my basis or my reasoning for skipping the mock exams uh, was that I felt like I wasn't being tested on the whole material at, at, uh, itself. So an exam, depending on what it is, is about 30 multiple choice, uh, two testlets of those, and then sims, right? So uh, if I'm looking at a 10 chapter uh, study process, um, me only doing 60 or 70 multiple choice questions for 10 chapters, there's a high likelihood that I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to end up missing something that um, I might need to know on the exam. So uh, my two week uh, cramming session, I did my own mock exams, if, if you will. So I did a uh, approach of, and, and this is after I've this is after I've done the multiple choice and studying on a weekly basis. I would do a targeted sample of 10 multiple choice questions per module each chapter. So that way I'm doing a lot more than just the 60 I do in a mock exam. Uh, I'm still being mindful, making sure I'm not, I'm not taking too much time on questions. So in that aspect, I was able to make sure I got used to the feel of how, how quick I should be spending on questions. But from there, I would see how I scored in that uh, statistical sample. And I would then study the areas that I had trouble with much more. So after I've done that, I then would do 10 questions uh, each chapter, which is about 100. If it were doing a, a 10 chapters, about 100 multiple choice questions. So uh, again, I'm cycling through much more multiple choice than I would in a mock exam, but I'm really trying to pinpoint what areas do I have issues with so I can brush up on them and be ready by test time. Uh, so that coupled with some days dedicated only to simulations uh, was, my, was my test approach. I told myself I can't spend more than an hour on each test lit when it comes to multiple choice. So I wanted to keep at least two hours of free time to answer the, mod the modules um, or the simulations, I should say. Uh, so if I was aware, if I was taking too long on the first Tesla or the second Tesla of multiple choice, I would need to pick it up in order to make sure I had enough time in the back end to answer all the uh, simulations that, that they had for me. So uh, when the simulations came, I, th I think... During one of my breaks, it was, I mean, I took like two minutes to figure it out, but depending on how much questions they give you in a simulation, you can then break down how much time I can spend on each sim, 
right? So uh, best case, you take less time than necessary so you could add more time to maybe a simulation that's going to give you trouble. Uh, worst case, once you hit that threshold, uh, you kind of either just got to wrap it up quickly or keep going uh, because you're going to end up getting backed up and that's going to uh, dock you later down the road on some simulations you might know, but you might just not have time to get to. Yeah, it was a it was a very comprehensive way of um, studying everything, but my biggest paranoia was that I would be tested on something that I I knew I, I remember learning, but I just didn't take enough time to drill it in my head. So I wanted to make sure I was solid in every single subject. My uh, I guess study, uh, study, um, routine was I, you know, read through all the blogs, got all the opinions on what works with some people, uh, watched countless uh, hundreds of YouTube videos of people sharing their study tips. And then I kind of made it work for me and how my brain works and how I remember certain things. Um, and I just executed it. You know, there were, you know, the first couple of tries, I think were trial and error, um, the first time I took the exam, I think that's what made me realize that you have to go into it having a structure in terms of timing. Um, so once I knew that, it was it was easy for me to know how much time I needed to spend on certain things without ne without needing to take a mock exam for four hours just to get the feel of it. How do you study for multiple choice questions? Yep. So for multiple choice questions. Uh, I did the two chapters a week approach. So after every lecture, um, I would attempt to do at least 20 multiple choice problems immediately after. Um, and so that way that would help me uh, take what I learned in the lecture or read in the book and start applying it to multiple choice questions. Uh, at that point, I then move on to the next chapter. So by the weekends, I really leveraged the weekends because I was working while I was studying. So the weekdays, I only had maybe three or four hours tops to study a day, but the weekends I have from uh, sunrise to sundown, right? So I could really drill as many multiple choice questions as I needed to that I had previously dabbled in uh, during the weekdays, but the weekends I really just drilled multiple choice questions. Um, and if I got them wrong, I made sure I, I read each question to understand why it wouldn't be these answers and why it is the correct answer. How do you study for simulation questions? At not every second of the day to do multiple choice. I made some, I made it a point to study some sims here and there. Um, it just takes a lot longer to go through simulations than it does multiple choice problems, right? So. I might dedicate 75% of my weekend on multiple choice questions and then 25 on Sims. And when it came down to that last week, when I was, I went through hundreds and thousands of multiple choice, I went through some simulations, I actually sat down and just watched the instructor on the online uh, course explain simulation. So although I wasn't, uh, testing myself on it, I was still watching to understand the concept and the flow that they needed to go through to get the answer. So that helped as well. I I would say the way I study for simulation. So I, I, I purposely, maybe for like a day, every couple of weeks, I would only focus on the uh, research questions, right? To get down the, the speediness of searching keywords and finding what I needed. Because those were those types of questions were the situations where I might have 12 minutes allocated to each question, but if I can get that research question done in two minutes, I just bought myself 10 minutes for some other questions. So uh, I focused on those specifically, and then after those for the simulations, um, and the, the simulations I had were really just very similar to the ones that were on the exam. So I just drilled uh, a few, uh, made sure that I was uh, getting them. If there was anything that I wasn't getting, uh, I made sure, oh, <laughs> bless you. Um, I made sure that I was watching the instructor explain it again so I could understand the concept and understand what I got wrong 
Uh, and if whether I was close, so if it was just maybe one little detail that I didn't remember that messed it up for me, or if I completely just didn't know the material, I then would need to double back and, you know, look at the lectures and, and read. And I think the multiple choice helped me understand the concepts. So when I was in the simulation, I could apply that knowledge to the open-ended question. How do you take study notes? So I took a similar approach that I took in college. So I'm a very um, visual type of learner. So I watched the lectures as if it was a professor and I would um, underline or highlight the material in the, uh, in the books that we had. And then after the lectures, I would then uh, look at everything in the book that was highlighted in the small little notes and uh, mnemonics that they had created for us. And I uh, wrote them down. I hand wrote them down. Just as an extra layer to, uh, you know, learn it, really understand everything that I'm, that I highlighted and everything that I'm writing down to remember it. Uh, so by the end of my studying, and I don't know if you saw my picture on LinkedIn, I had these papers spread out everywhere so the, the, all those papers were all my notes um and that's just for one exam so uh, i essentially had rewrote the book uh just with all my notes just to again kind of hammer the information in my head and that that's just what works for me i'm not saying everybody should do that um but i mean if, if some people are good at typing notes that might be quicker for them and less labor intensive uh, some people don't need to do notes, but at least for me, uh, note taking helped me get that initial uh, understanding of a lot of the material. Yeah, I, I will tell you it helped out in those final two weeks because when there were chapters that I was iffy on, um, I was able to just go to the notes and that was like a concentrated version of the book. So it was much easier for me to read down everything that I had taken notes on than have to read through a textbook trying to decipher and understand it so it does I, th I think it does help you in the long run with being able to kind of cycle through all of that information much quicker like like you said you can make certain keywords maybe underline them in red so it's it just stands out more in your head and something you can remember uh later uh, when you're trying to take those multiple choice questions or simulations or do a quick you know say you only have 30 minutes on lunch break to study uh, you can just quickly go down through different keywords and all of that. So I definitely recommend it if, if, if someone is willing to put in the time to, to handwrite their notes like we did. Which material did you study first for the CPA exam? The order that I studied the material was with the video lecture. Uh, while I was doing the video lecture, I would do my uh, quick notes because the lecturer would you know, tell us what to underline and uh, certain hints or quick tricks to memorize certain things. So I would take those notes as I was watching the videos. Um, at that point, after the lecture is done, there were these, they're not Sims. They're kind of um, watered down versions of Sims. So they're not as, con they're not as large as a simulation, but they're my, it's, it's a, uh, they're asking you a question you have to answer it. it's not multiple choice right so i would do that again to make sure i understood what i just learned and then i would do the the set of 10 or 20 multiple choice questions just to get used to answering uh questions of what i just learned in a multiple choice format and then i would follow that until i finished the chapter uh go on to the second chapter and then by the weekend uh, i would use both saturday and sunday to study everything that i had just went over